Hello, everybody. This is my very first time going live on YouTube. And I got to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I figured this would be a bit of a test run for me to see how the whole process works. I'm not even sure if you can hear me properly. I don't have a proper microphone yet. But I just thought. Sometimes when we're afraid to do something, we just need to rip the Band-Aid off and go forward and go ahead and give it a shot. So this is what I'm doing. Hello, and I have my first viewer. So <laughs> before I talk about what I wanted this topic to be about, which is following the breadcrumbs of the universe and listening to your intuition and what can actually happen in our lives when we do this. I just wanted to give you a little update about what's happening in my life. I, you, or you may or may not have noticed, may, I don't know, have you noticed? I haven't been uploading videos for the last couple of weeks and that's because everything has been so hectic and chaotic. I normally have a specific filming day or I have a specific day when I write my topic and I write my script for the videos and then another day I will film it and it's always in between my counselling clients and then I have a couple of days where I, hi Red, where I do the editing of my videos but over the last month I had an out-of-town family member visit us which made it harder to film as well because I don't like filming in front of people. I like to be alone in the house. And this family member, unfortunately, went to hospital for emergency surgery. They're completely okay now, but it also meant that their stay was extended by another two weeks before they could fly home. And so it was quite an exhausting time. The day before they flew back home, my car got struck by lightning. So this happened last week. Um, there was a huge storm in our area. When I say huge storm, I actually mean there was a small storm in our area that settled over the top of our house and our house got struck by lightning. We had these concrete slabs on our front yard that got split in half or split into threes and the lightning bolt went into the ground and then blew up our power meter it struck my car and my car got had to be towed away it's not working it's completely dead uh we lost power i lost the internet my computer died and then i don't know how miraculously after a day i was able to recharge it and it seems okay now and I'm using the computer right now, but it's just been hectic. It's been so chaotic. And as a fellow INFJ introvert, I completely hit burnout. So I've been in that burnout cycle mode, which if you listen to a few of my videos, even a few weeks ago, before all of this happened, before the hospital, before the lightning, I did mention that I felt like I was heading towards a burnout. So yeah, it's it's been a lot. And because I haven't filmed anything, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to go live with you so that I I just want to try live. I, I don't really know how this, the streaming thing works. I'm a bit nervous about it, but I just wanted to produce at least one video this week for you. I've missed you all so much, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I feel so encouraged and loved by your comments when you comment on my videos. It means a lot to me. And I'm just seeing Red's comments about, wow, Sam, and yeah, it's just been a lot. Okay, I'm seeing I can add, like, emojis. Okay, I just love heart of that. I don't know if that worked. Okay, so I wanted to share with you about following the breadcrumbs of the universe and listening to your intuition and what can actually happen when we do pay attention to what our intuition is saying. 
If you're an INFJ or an empath or an introvert, then, and I'm sure quite possibly you are if you're watching this, then we all know that you are an intuitive person, that you are someone who hears your intuition. But I guess I wanted to ask you, hi, Rob. I wanted to ask you, do you actually pay attention to what your intuition is trying to nudge you to do and do you follow through with it? I wanted to share with you a story about how when I made the decision to listen to my intuition, it has led me to what this community is today and it's led me to Paper Crane of Hope. Now, for some context, I was at this time, I was a brand new mum. This is over eight years ago now. I was a brand new mum, and I had one of those babies that cried, cried, and cried. In fact, my daughter cried so much that she was the, the type of baby that would wake up every 20 minutes during the night. So I was a complete sleep deprived wreck. I thought that motherhood was going to be easy for me because I had just spent the last decade working with some of the most difficult people I have ever worked with in Australia and also in Canada. So I worked, if you listen to my videos, you might know that I worked in homelessness. I worked in youth justice i'm seeing that red is saying that she had one of those babies too yes i oh it was hard it was a hard first year despite working with some of the most difficult people um you know i worked with prisoners like kids in prison who had done horrific crimes and nothing prepared me for motherhood nothing prepared me for what <laughs> i was going to experience and I felt like I had lost a part of myself and I felt like I just suddenly became this stay at home mom with this crying baby. I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know, I didn't recognize my own body. I missed being involved in my community and contributing to society around me in a positive way and trying to make a difference and make an impact. And um, this particular day I was crying and I was, you know, telling myself all of this, like, I don't know who I am, who am I? And that's when I started seeing the image of the paper crane. So I started seeing paper cranes in my dreams. I saw paper cranes on posters. I saw paper cranes on TV, in movies. Uh, folded paper cranes at the library. I just started seeing paper cranes everywhere. To me, that was like a breadcrumb from the universe, like a little whisper of the universe. And I felt like my intuition was trying to tell me something with this. And I told myself, okay, you know what? I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to learn about the paper crane. And I'm going to learn how to fold a paper crane. So I went out and I brought myself a packet of origami paper and taught myself how to fold a paper crane. And it honestly, my first one was pathetic. It was very difficult to fold. But while I was folding it, I did some research and learnt what the paper crane meant. And paper cranes are a symbol of hope and healing. And I read about the little Japanese girl. I was going to say the Japanese girl in Japan, but yeah, the Japanese girl in Japan, Sadako Sasasuko, I can never pronounce her name right. She was a victim in the Hiroshima bombings in the 1940s and she became very sick from being in that bombing. And um, she was known to have folded 1,000 paper cranes and she was quoted to have said, I will write peace on your wings and fly you all over the world. So I read that. I was like, wow, that's amazing. That's so amazing. I need to do that. And that's when the idea came for Paper Crane of Hope. 
And with that paper, that first paper crane that I folded, my pathetic little paper crane <laughs> that did not look that great, I wrote, I decided to write a message on its wing of hope and healing. And I decided that I was going to tap into my intuition and write something for some stranger out there. I was hoping that stranger would be another struggling mum, a mum that I could encourage as she went about her day with her baby. And I went to my local cafe to leave this paper crane there. And in the last moment, I decided to take a photo of it and post it on Instagram anonymously. So that's how my paper crane of hope Instagram account started. And then before I knew it, I was leaving paper cranes every day. With my baby, I would bundle her up, I'd put her in the pram, and we would walk around my local neighbourhood leaving paper cranes with messages of hope and healing in the park, at the library, at cafes, at the local pool. And it just became this really beautiful experience that I could have with my daughter where it connected us, it got us out of the house, it helped calm her down because we were walking. And I felt like I was able to, even though I had no sleep, I had no energy, I felt like I had nothing to give. To me, it was just like one small thing that I could do for my community with the little limited capacity that I had. And then Paper Crane of Hope just started blowing up as it, whatever blowing up looked like back in 2015. The local paper discovered it and they did an article about it and almost every day I was having people messaging me to say that they found one of my paper cranes and how much they needed that message in that moment. I remember one time a man messaged me, oh Red is saying that she thinks it's wonderful, thank you, (laughs) and that she found me on Instagram because of that. Um, yeah, this man messaged me and the day before that he found my paper crane, his son had passed away and he found my paper crane in Aldi and he was feeling so obviously feeling so distressed and heart wrecked from his son passing away. He messaged me to say that finding my paper crane gave him that small bit of hope to keep going and that he would find healing and that he would get through this time in his life. And I'm just saying that Rob wrote, our intuition can be very strong. We need to listen to it. Absolutely. Yes. And I never, when I first started seeing all all these pictures in my mind and in my dreams about paper cranes and I felt to follow that little breadcrumb from the universe, I obviously had no idea that it would lead me to where I am today. And if I didn't take that first step, I would never have seen this beautiful pathway open up. And sometimes that's what we need to do. We get these breadcrumbs that we need to pick up, pay attention to, and just see where it takes us. And I've always said that when it comes to listening to our intuition, to ask ourselves, is it kind? Is it good? Is it loving? Is it safe? And when I say safe, I mean more like your physical safety. Sometimes doing something that's scary might not feel safe, but it can be good for us. So after I kept getting all of these messages from people telling me how much they needed those paper cranes, I really felt like it was another breadcrumb from the universe to take this one step further. And at the time, my qualifications were in um, or are in youth work and community services. But something that I always wanted to do was become a counsellor. And working in youth services, I had a counselling services team by my side and I used to have those counsellors encourage me that I should become a counsellor one day. And it just never felt like the right timing for me because it meant I had to go back and do more study and all of that. But at this point, my baby, she was about 
15 months old and I just felt like the universe was nudging me that now is the, the time to go back to study to become a therapist and I found a course that allowed me to do it like um, self-paced and in my own timing so I went ahead and did that and sure enough four years later I finished my counseling course I had moved across the country with my family I had a second baby and I was able to open up what you see today which is the counseling services side for paper crane of hope and i often wonder would i have become a counselor my my biggest dream something i wanted to do since i was a teenager would i have become a counselor would this be existing right now if i didn't pick up that breadcrumb from the universe about learning how to fold a paper crane and I want to encourage you. Have you noticed any little intuitive guidance, guide guidance from the universe or God or whoever you, whoever or whatever you believe in? Have you noticed little breadcrumbs? And are you paying attention? Are you listening to it? Do you have the courage to follow through with what those little intuitive hits are telling you to do? because I'm blown away by how this has unfolded for me. And I'm so grateful that I'm here and doing what I always dreamt of doing. Um, yeah, what about you? I'm just gonna look at some of the comments. And crazy Ronald Hitching is saying hi to Red. And now they're having a little chat. Oh, and I can see Anne just saying hello, and that she caught me live. So hi, Anne. And I don't really have anything else to say. That was basically what I wanted to share. I will tell you though that this was a little ex excerpt, a snippet of what I shared for my first Toastmasters speech. So I had a lot of people asking me how my us icebreaker Toastmasters speech went and this was basically the topic which was about following the breadcrumbs of the universe and I'm seeing that and just saying I have been learning to follow my intuition more and more yeah and I actually have a video on on red is saying I do try to listen to the breadcrumbs and I know you do red I do have a video on my channel about what um intuition feels like and how to listen to your intuition and paying attention even to like how your body feels and some some of those more subtle cues about what your body and emotions might feel like when it is your intuition speaking but I would say that with learning to follow and listen to your intuition sometimes it just takes practice and we're not always going to get it right but when we do get it right oh my gosh it's amazing i'm just listening i'm not listening. i'm just going to read the other comments um red saying listen to the breadcrumbs and just saying and when i do it always works out yes red is saying when i don't i don't have peace absolutely Crazy Ron, I feel weird calling you Crazy Ron. Crazy Ronald Hitching saying happy blessed Thanksgiving for y'alls. Y'alls, we don't do Thanksgiving in Australia, <laughs> but happy Thanksgiving. And Red is saying thank you. Okay, so that's it from me. Unless anybody who is watching has any questions they might want to ask and if not, I'm going to end this. I'm starting to feel a bit nervous, hoping that this has worked and hoping that I got all the tech stuff right. Um, Alec is saying hello. Hi, Alec. Okay. If you don't have any questions, I am going to love you and leave you. Thank you for jumping on my first live. I hope it wasn't too awkward. And that it, you know, has gone okay. And 
yeah, take care and I'll see you next time. I'm hoping to film a video tomorrow. I'm feeling pretty good again. Alec is saying, hey, Red and Ronald. Oh, my gosh. I feel like I can't end the stream because everyone's, like, chatting and I don't want to interrupt your chatting. It's very lovely. Okay. Red saying bye. So. <laughs> okay. Bye. Catch you later.